So, here I am going to list out a few standard discrete and continuous random variable. So, these are all the standard one we are going to use it in our course. So, the first one is a discrete uniform distribution or the random variable is a discrete uniform distributed random variable. Suppose, I make the random variable x is a uniformly discrete uniformly distributed with the with the discrete points x n. That means, uh, the random variable takes the possible values x 1 to x n and uh, it has the masses at the x size of equal mass for i is vary from 1 to n and all otherwise it is going to be 0. Then in that case we say the random variable is going to be called as a discrete uniform distribution. That means, uh, it is going to satisfy the property the summation of uh, all the x size is going to be 1 and the probability of x equal to x size is going to be uh, greater or equal to 0. That means, uh, for this x size it is going to be greater than 0 and all other points it is going to be 0. Therefore, it is satisfying the probability mass function of the discrete random variable. Therefore, this is the probability mass function of the random variable of the discrete random variable x. So, the p probability of x equal to x i is going to be the probability mass function of the discrete random variable x i. The second one, the discrete case that is a binomial distribution. When we say the random variable x is going to be call it as a binomially distributed with the parameters n and p then the probability mass function for the random variable is going to be n c x p power x 1 minus p power n minus x, where x takes the value from 0, 1, 2 and so on. That means, uh, this is the probability mass function of a binomial distribution, it takes a value 0 to n, that means, uh, it has the jump points n plus 1 points as the jump points uh, n plus 1 jump points and uh, this we call it as a binomial distribution. If you put n is equal to 1, then that is going to be the Bernoulli distribution random variable and uh, here the p is nothing but the probability of success in each trial and uh, you can create the binomial trials by having a n independent Bernoulli trials and each trial the probability of success is going to be The third discrete random variable which we are going to use that is a geometric distribution. When we say the random variable x is geometrically distributed with the parameter p, then the probability mass function of this random variable is going to be 1 minus p power r minus 1 into p, where r can take the value from 1, 2 and so on. For that means, uh, if you have any discrete random variable and that random variable probability mass function is going to be of this form, then we say that random variable is geometrically distributed with the parameter p. And here the p can be treated as the probability of success in each trial and you can say what is the probability that the rth trial getting the first success that is same as all the trials are independent. Therefore, you have a r minus 1 trials you have the success subsequently uh, failures subsequently and you get the success first time in the rth trial. Therefore, you land up 1 minus p power r minus 1 for all such uh, failure or all such uh, non success uh, r minus 1 trials and uh, first success in the rth trial. Next, we are moving into the discrete continuous random variables. 
the first one is a continuous uniform distribution. When we say the random variable x is continuous uniform distribution between the interval a to b, then the probability density function for the random variable x is going to be of the form 1 divided by b minus a between the interval a to b and all other it is going to be 0. That means, the probability density function for this random variable is is a have the height a and if you treat it this is b and this height is 1 divided by b minus a. That means, uh, if you find out the integration between the range a to b of a height 1 divided by b minus a, then that is going to be 1 and uh, this is going to be greater or equal to 0 always. Therefore, this is going to be the probability density function of the continuous random variable and uh, for any continuous random variable, the probability density function is going to be 1 divided by length of the interval in which it takes the value 1 divided by this much and all other it is 0, then that random variable is going to be call it as a continuous uniform distribution between the interval a to b. And if you see the CDF of this random variable, so, till a it is going to be 0 and uh, after a it is going to be increasing and uh, at the point b it reaches 1. That means, uh, you can come to the conclusion if any random variable CDF is going to be uh, between 0 to 1 in the interval a to b with this standing line, then you can come out what is a, a point in which a, a and b and you can come to the find out what is the random variable in which it is going to be a continuous, it is going to be a uniform distribution between the interval a to b. The second one is a exponential distribution. When we say the continuous uh, random variable x is going to be exponentially distributed with the parameter lambda, if the probability density function for that random variable is going to be lambda times e power minus lambda x and between the x is going to be greater than 0 or if it is going it is going to be 0 otherwise. That means, uh, within the range of 0 to infinity in the f of x is going to be lambda times e power minus lambda x otherwise it is going to be 0. So, if you see the probability density function of that uh, continuous random variable, it is going to start from lambda and asymptotically it touches 0. So, this is the probability density function of the exponential distribution and if you see the CDF of this, it reaches 1 at infinity. So, this exponential distribution is going to be used in many of our problems later. Therefore, uh, all the properties of the exponential distribution that I will discuss uh, when we come up, when we discuss the stochastic process in detail. The third distribution is a normal distribution or Gaussian distribution. So, when we say the random variable is normally distributed with the parameters mu and sigma square, the probability density function is going to be 1 divided by square root of 2 pi sigma e power minus of times x minus mu by sigma whole square. Here, the x can lie between minus infinity to infinity and the mu also can lie between minus infinity to infinity and the sigma is a strictly positive quantity. And the mu is nothing but the mean of a normal distribution 
and the sigma square is the variance of normal distribution and the sigma is the standard deviation and the standard deviation is always strictly greater than 0. And if you see the probability density function of f of x asymptotically it start. So, I made it with uh, mu is equal to 0 and this is the probability density. So, it looks like a bell shape. So, this is going to be a normal distribution and you can always uh, convert the normal distribution into the standard normal by using this substitution z is equal to x minus mu by sigma. So, you land up with the standard normal 1 that is 1 divided by square root of 2 pi e power minus z square by 2, where z lies between minus infinity to infinity. So, this is going to be a standard normal distribution in which the mean is 0 and the variance is 1. So, other than uh, the discrete uh, standard distributions, uh, we have discussed only the discrete uniform distribution, then second we discuss the binomial distribution, then we discussed uh, geometric distribution. The fourth one that is a very important that is a Poisson distribution. When we say the discrete random variable uh, x is going to be a Poisson distribution with the parameter lambda, if uh, the probability mass function for the random variable x is going to be of the form e power minus lambda lambda power x divided by x factorial where x can take the value from 0, 1, 2 and so on. So, that means, uh, this is the discrete type random variable in which uh, it has the countably infinite masses and uh, these are all the jump points and the masses are going to be e power minus lambda lambda power x by x factorial. Here, the lambda is strictly greater than 0. That means, uh, if any ra discrete random variable has the probability mass function of this form, then we can say that that random variable is a Poisson distributed with the parameter lambda. And if you see the probability mass function for the different values of x, so whatever the lambda you have chosen, so accordingly it is going to be at 0 it has some value and 1 it has some other value and 2 and so on. So, that means, uh, for fixed lambda you can just draw the probability mass function and this is going to be have a countably infinite mass and if you add uh, over the 0 to infinity that is going to be 1 and the masses are going to be always greater than 0 and all other points it is going to be 0. And this is going to be the very important uh, distribution because uh, using this we are going to create a one stochastic process that is going to be call it as a Poisson process. That means, uh, in the Poisson process the each random variable is going to be Poisson distributed. So, for that uh, we should know what is the uh, probability mass function of the Poisson distribution and the properties. And here the lambda is same as if you find out the mean for this Poisson distribution, the mean is going to be lambda and the variance is also going to be lambda. So, this is a one particular uh, distribution in which uh, the mean variance is going to be same as the parameter lambda. So, in today's lecture what we have covered uh, introduction of a uh, stochastic process by giving the motivation motivation of the by giving a uh, four different uh, examples to motivate the stochastic process. Then what we have uh, covered is uh, um, what is the probability theory knowledge is needed. In that I have covered only the uh, probability space and the random variable and the discrete uh, standard random variables as well as uh, standard continuous random variables. There are some more uh, standard uh, discrete random variables as well as there are some more uh, discrete uh, there are some more standard continuous random variable that I have not covered here because it is a probability theory uh, refresher and uh, some of the distribution if it is needed then will be covered at the time of uh, when we explain the stochastic process itself. Therefore, uh, with uh, giving a few standard discrete random variable and a few standard continuous random variable I will complete uh, today's uh, lecture and the next lecture I will cover uh, some of the other probability theory 
concepts needed for the stochastic process that I will cover it in the next lecture. Then the third lecture onwards I will start the stochastic process. Thank you. Thank you.